You know when you get a random feature idea late at night when everything gets quiet and you're supposed to take a break, but you just can't stop thinking about it. And then you bring your oatmeal to your desk at midnight and start poking around. I was already researching this before and it wasn't really working, but I had to give it one more shot. And even if it meant prototyping something in the bizarre language of Apple Script. I also found these RGB lights in the basement and I started using them for these late night coding sessions. But overall, I'm trying to implement a global tab switcher for my app one menu to allow switching between tabs of any open application on your Mac. And one menu for those of you who don't know is a small but powerful utility app for the Mac that comes with a window manager, a clipboard history, system monitoring and other useful features like alt tab window switching. So I wanted to improve it by implementing a tab switcher as well. I tried integrating my Apple script prototype using cursor, but it wasn't really working at all. And even though I was very excited about it, I learned that I shouldn't pursue crazy architectures very late at night, so I went to sleep. All right, so here's the bolted on Apple script prototype that I kind of wrote last night and it might have worked in the end, but I wasn't happy about the fact that it required an entirely new permission. So I decided to explore different options. Also, I decided to do something about the fact that I had absolutely no window blinds in this room at all. I moved here recently, so there's a lot of simple things still missing in this apartment. Anyhow, I took a quick measurement of the window because this will be important later. But in contrast to my Apple script prototype, the accessibility API actually did produce some promising results at first, so I decided to move forward with that. I did ask Cursor to try and tidy up the code, which I must say did work. By the way, this video is sponsored by Ugreen, and they were kind enough to send me this network attached storage, and so I tried to set it up because this morning it arrived at my door and I really needed it as someone who produces a lot of video files. Its full name is Ugreen NAS DXP 4800 Plus, and it's like your own private cloud storage, your own little data center if you will, running on your own hardware, and depending on the disks you choose, it can store up to 112 terabytes of storage, which is equivalent to like 2000 hours of high bitrate 4K video. I set up mine with 16 terabytes of storage and even at that volume it already costs less than a year worth of equivalent iCloud or Google Drive. And it's important to note that it offers a very wide range of compatibility with third-party hard disks and SSDs. Plus being on your local network the transfer speeds do not compare with Google Drive or any other cloud provider and they can go up to 1250 megabytes per second on wired connections and Ugreen does support supply you with two high-grade Ethernet cables by the way, which admittedly was a bit hard to demo because the Mac doesn't have Ethernet ports, but even with that limitation it's so much faster than traditional cloud. And I can also sleep well because it of course supports RAID for redundancy. Through the NAS Sync client I can access all my files from all my devices just like they were in the cloud except that nobody's training AI models on them. Plus the web admin panel is so well built and intuitive. This is what really got me. You can change all the settings, sharing permissions, manage user accounts, run custom software and set up rsync right from there or even open up SSH access for custom scripts. And it comes with a native macOS app that allows you to quickly connect, manage your NAS and set up your backups all with a few simple clicks. So if you're looking for a private, powerful and convenient storage solution, the special link in the description gives you 25% off so make sure to check it out. And thanks to Ugreen for sending this out to me. I really appreciate it. So after I was able to isolate just the tabs using the accessibility API and do a nice little debug print of all of them, I decided to do a quick snack and go out for coffee and get the window blinds. Today we are listening to the one and only and this shirt is just perfection. The accessibility API is a bit finicky to work with and not all apps expose tabs in the exact same way. So my goal at this point was to try and implement support for a few more apps just to get a feel for how they behave. For now I made the tabs appear as regular windows in the window switcher because I wasn't ready to work on the UI yet. And again using the accessibility API was convenient because one menu already had a permission for it but it often produces overly verbose outputs, however that wasn't even the 
biggest problem. Somehow I was getting quite a bit of duplication of open windows and they seemed to duplicate in the list after I switched to another tab. But after what felt like 15 minutes or so, I actually spent more than 2 hours working on this and it was already time to go back home before my daughter comes back from kindergarten because I had to make lunch in the meantime. But along the way, I also stopped to get the window blinds and as you can see, they fit perfectly. You know, I tried to get to the bottom of this duplication issue because it was really driving me crazy. And along the way, I discovered a very handy accessibility inspector tool built right into macOS to help me debug some of these problems. But it didn't help at all because the accessibility API was not even causing the duplication. So I had to try again tomorrow. Tomorrow again, I went to grab a quick coffee in the same neighborhood that I need to go to return the window blinds. And you know, I was able to identify the reason for this duplication and seemingly when creating a new tab in certain native macOS apps, but not all of them, the window itself gets a completely different window ID. And it turns out this is causing widespread bug reports in pretty much every major window manager on macOS. And in particular, the tiling window managers are having the most trouble. Luckily, one menu is not a tiling window manager, and I would be able to fix this duplication if only I could somehow get at least the space ID of each window. That, of course, turns out to be a private API call that Apple doesn't want to expose. And I tried a number of things, I even asked Cursor, but I just couldn't get it to work or compile using those private undocumented APIs. And you know, all of this unnecessary trouble just made me want to do something a little bit different. But anyhow, after I healed the emotional damage caused by Apple's internal API layer and by taking some inspiration from this window manager called Yabai, I was finally able to get the space ID for each window. And then I tried actually fixing the issue that I had with duplicated windows and Cursor just decided it was a great time to troll me. I mean, look at this. Remove all windows from the map that are present in the set of space IDs. And it goes, if not set of space IDs, contains a window value space ID and I'm like I want my money back bro it's insulting but anyhow finally even though it looked like there is a lot of duplication still take my word for it this debug list of windows is now correct and you know time flies when you're working so I committed my changes and I jumped onto the train to pick up my daughter from kindergarten and as the rain was hitting the window somewhat poetically I finally felt like it was the right time to think about the UI for this entire feature Welcome to another late night coding session. Sorry, I didn't bother cleaning. After I picked up my daughter, we played pretty much for the rest of the day, and now that she's asleep, it's my time again to come face to face with code. I was so tired, and I tried using cursor to help me with some grunt work, but we kept running into those, ah oh, yeah, you're right, situations. But nevertheless, after some haggling with SwiftUI, I did make the first working version that I kinda liked, and the experience of navigating between tabs of all open apps Apps was really exciting, so I posted a teaser on Discord, and even at midnight, there were people there chatting. That's what I really love about our community. In one of the next vlogs, I'll be polishing up this feature and releasing it to everybody, but in the meantime, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.